Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and this is part of uh, two videos on the same topic. I'm going to release them within about a day of each other. This one is all about getting up and running and the topic today is armor paint, which I will probably mistakenly call armory paint a few dozen times because it is built on top of the armory game engine. The same guy that is developing that blunder game engine is developing this software. Now armor paint, I'm not going to get into a lot of details about what it's all about in this video because that's what the other video is about. I will show you armor paint in action, uh, kind of praise it merits, talk about what's in the new release and all that in the other video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can go ahead and get up and running with it. It is a free and open source project, but you have to build the binaries yourself. So that's what this video is all about. We're going to go step by step through the process of getting Armor Paint up and running on Windows. So if you're on Linux, the, inst the installation instructions are a little bit different. And by the way, if this is all really terrifying to you, you can also just buy it. So if you want to support Armor Paint's development or the Armory game engine, um, even if you know how to do the build it yourself, you can actually pay uh, 16 euro and have access to uh, pre-compiled binaries. So if you don't want to go through all of this hassle or you want to support the developer, you can just straight up spend 16 bucks or 16 euro, which is probably about Actually, I have no idea what a euro is today. I think it's close to parity with the USD, probably about $20 Canadian there. Um, and, you know, you can skip this entire hassle. But if you like the idea of building things from scratch, well, that is what we are going to do today. Now, it is available up on GitHub. Uh, we are going to want to clone it right here. I'll grab that for now, but I'll come back and show you that step by step. Also, by the way, there are instructions right here on how to build it for various different platforms. Uh, I'm just going to show you basically what is documented here. I think there's a step or two missing, unfortunately. Um, and uh, if you already know how to do all of the things listed there, this video probably isn't that useful for you. Now, in order to get through this process, you are going to need a couple of pieces of software available. Obviously, we are cloning a Git repository. That means you need a Git client. If you're on Linux or Mac, that's not a big deal. It's probably already installed, but on Windows, you need something. I would recommend um, Git-SCM. Just install it, allow it to install into your path, and you are good to go. The other thing you're going to need is Node. Node is a JavaScript server based off of a custom uh, Chrome's V8 thing. Basically, they took the runtime out of the browser and made it like a an executable. You can run uh, JavaScript programs from your command line. Node got really popular over the last few years, so there's a good chance you probably already have it installed. If you do not have it installed already, it's available at nodejs.org. And now finally, or second from finally, I guess, on the Windows platforms, you need to have Visual Studio. You can use 2017 or 2019. Either will work just fine. Just download whichever one you prefer, and then make sure that you install the C++ workload. That will make sense once you've got it installed. And don't worry, even if you screw up the installation, you can add workloads after the fact. So they've broken C++ up into tasks, so, sorry, Visual Studio into tasks. So things like C Sharp, C++, uh, Visual Basic, F Sharp, etc. are all separate workloads as are web, desktop, and so on. So make sure that you have the C++ one installed and you should probably be set in that regard. And then the final thing you're going to need is some kind of a zip client. 7-Zip is what I'm using. 7-Zip is what the documentation recommends. And 7-Zip is awesome. So if you don't already have it installed, not a bad idea. Get that one installed as well. All right, so that is everything you need. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do again is go back and grab the text of the, uh, the repository location. So grab this guy right here and copy that to your uh, command prompt or to your uh, copy buffer. And I'm going to fire up a command prompt like so. You don't need to elevate permissions or anything like that. I'll zoom this in so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, there we go. So what I'm going to do is move into my trusty temp directory. Now, when you clone a repository, it will automatically create a folder for you. But I have so much crap in my temp directory that I'm just going to make one called armor just in case. And I'm going to switch into that folder. And now what you want to do is a git and then a clone. And then you paste in that, rec that URL we just copied from the site. And then what you want to do is a dash dash recursive. So this will call it to bring in the dependencies. It'll bring in more than just the repository. It brings in the other repositories this repository depends on. Now, this process can take a little bit of time. It all kind of depends on your connection speed. Uh, I'm just going to leave it running. It doesn't take that long on my end. Actually, you know what? My throat's going out. So I'm going to use this pause to uh, have a sip of uh, tea, and I'll be right Okay, still running. Uh, again, it will be just a few more moments. This is uh, pulling in things like iron and ZUI. Now, if you're curious, again, this guy is developing um, armor paint and armor, uh, so armory, sorry, the game engine, and it is still under development. Unfortunately, he just sort of stopped doing like updates on it so that the people don't necessarily know what's new. Um, he's not doing release notes or anything. So that's why I haven't really been covering it on my channel. But it, this is powered on top of the armory game engine. So armory is still very much alive. I think he basically just saw that with the 
you know, um, Adobe buying Substance, so Substance Painter became an Adobe product. A lot of people were looking for an alternative, and he just kind of focused his time on that. Okay, so we are good. Uh, you'll notice we now have a new directory. Uh, if I click here, all right. So here there are. So you see, we've got Armor Paint. We're gonna switch into that guy, all right? So, and now we're gonna run a couple of commands. But before that, we need to actually unzip a file. So from within this folder, if you're using Windows, what you can do is type Explorer and then a dot, and that will open up the Windows Explorer to the current directory. All right, so here you go. I've set it up in this weirdo view so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, what we wanna do is go into Chrome X right here and look for V8. Inside of V8, you will find libraries. And the problem was these are just too big uh, for to work with, uh, I think, GitHub. Uh, so he's had to zip them. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna be building the, the, the release version right here. So go into the release folder and you'll see there is a .7z file in here. Just right click that guy, assuming you have 7-zip installed and extract it to that location. All right, there you go. So you see it, it was just over 100 megabytes in size. So you had to zip that down. So you have to do this for whatever platform you're building. So if you're going to do a debug build instead, you would go in and extract out this version instead. But like I said, we just want the release in this particular case. Um, and if you're just building it to run it yourself, you probably want the release version as well. All right, so that's all we need Explorer for. You can shut that down. And now we need to do a couple of build steps. So uh, this is why you had to have node installed. Um, now what we wanna do is do a node and then we're gonna go into that Chromex folder again, and we're gonna run make. And this is gonna build all of the shaders we need. Uh, so you pick the, the version you're using. I'm gonna follow the instructions. We're gonna build for uh, Direct3D 11. Um, there's OpenGL options as well, especially if you're on other platforms. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll build that. Uh, this builds all the various different shaders that we need for this to complete. And dun, 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 dun. All right, so there we go. And now what we're gonna do is switch into the Chrome X directory itself, like so, and we're going to run another command. Once again, using node, we're gonna run kink slash make, and we're gonna make for direct 3D 11 again, like so. And we are good to go. Okay, so now what we need to do is open up the, the uh, project file. So the problem is, I forget exactly where it's created. It's in a folder called build, but I can never remember where. So we're in the Chrome X folder. There is a folder here called build. Open inside of that guy, and you will notice we have a solution file or a Visual C++ file. I'm gonna open up the solution. Uh, the solution will open the project file, so it's kind of the same-ish thing, but this has some global settings in it that that one may not. So I'm gonna run that. Visual Studio will run. For some reason, it did not actually get focused, but uh, here we go. So we are now in Visual Studio. Uh, there's only one more step that you need to take is you go up to your Chrome project, right-click it, and select Properties or hit Alt-Enter. This will bring you into the uh, Properties pages. We wanna go into the debugging folder right here, and we're just setting a command argument. This is directly in the instructions, by the way, so if you wanna copy and paste. But what you wanna do is an open quote, and then dot, dot, slash, so back a directory, back another directory, um, and then build, and then slash crom, and then close quotes. So quote, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, build, slash crom, end quote. And we'll just apply that like so. Then the final thing you need to do is switch over here to release. Again, this has to match whatever you did for um, you unzipped when you made that uh, lib file. And theoretically, we are done. So you wanna build your project now, you can either do Control Shift B or you go up to build and say build solution right here. And this will compile it. Now, hopefully, and this is where the land of C++ is always a little interesting. Hopefully we will build this with no build error. So we'll let this guy, this, it'll run down here. This only, it's actually a pretty quick build for the most part. Uh, so we'll let that run um, and hopefully have absolutely zero errors in the end. Um, all right, I, I'll pause it. This Again, this will probably only take a couple more seconds, but I'll pause it anyways. Yeah, literally uh, well, within a minute, it was done. So here we are, you'll see, ideally what you're looking for is one succeeded and that's, that, that's a good news. Now, I don't know if it's because I have an Optimus machine, so I have an NVIDIA and an internal GPU, and I actually have a dedicated GPU as well externally, that I run into problems with running these kind of programs directly inside of Visual Studio, at least on the machine I'm dealing with right now. If I run this on just a dedicated GPU machine, I don't have any issues. But if you want to move it completely outside of Visual Studio now, you have built the required executable. So now what we need to do is go ahead and copy it to the right folder. So you can get there. You can actually uh, explore right here. So... Um, Open in Explorer, should be around here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Um, this will open up to where we are right here. And what we were interested in, you'll notice is where they've got the build folder here. The build that we just made is x64. Uh, scroll, oh, wrong way. 
right, here we go. So there's a release folder like so. And then what you want to do is grab chrome.exe. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that guy. We'll go back to our root folder right here. And under build, you will find chrome right here. And then just paste it into this guy right there. So this is basically an install. You could take this chrome folder right here. Uh, you could copy it out, call it Armory Paint. You can rename this guy Armory if you so wish. But this is your running version. So if you like me are running Optimus, just right click this guy, say run with graphics processor, and then high def. And then boom, we are now in Armory Painter, it, it, Armory pa Armor Paint. Sorry, I told you I was going to do that. And it should be running full speed on your GPU of choice. Now, this is a standard executable you can go ahead and do with it as you wish. So it's a little confusing that it is called Chrome. Uh, but again, this entire folder right here, this uh, Chrome folder right here, that is your finished result. So it's basically uh, the Chrome EXE needs to be able to locate this JavaScript file in order to run. Uh, and then the required data is available right here in this folder. So this is all you need. This is it. This is Armory Paint built. This is the final executable. And as you saw, it is up and running. So if you run into some problems getting it to run in Visual Studio, if you've got kind of an odd setup like I do, don't be shocked. I don't know why I run into problems with certain machines where it will run and other machines where it will not. And again, this one is weird because it's got two GPUs, an integrated GPU, and then again, one being external. But if you do run into problems and you want to run it directly from... Um, inside of Visual Studio and you have issues, do make sure, again, that if you go into the debugging folder right here, that this, uh, oh, no, this guy right here, that this command prompt is set to this. So it's on the wrong guy. So we'll just go ahead and grab that guy and we will paste him in here. So quote, boom. So you got to make sure that that guy is set for it to be able to locate that JavaScript file. Or like I said, since you've got the executable done and you're not going to be doing any debugging or anything, you can literally just copy that Chrome exe over into this folder. And then you can just basically take this guy anywhere you want. So I could grab that guy, copy it down, throw it on my desktop, paste that out, rename it Armory. or armor paint, and you're done. There you go. You just created a version of armor paint you can use uh, as much as you wish. Uh, again, if you find this entire process tedious or you run into problems or you just find it annoying or you don't want to deal with C++ or anything, do keep in mind 16 euro and all of the pain goes away. Each time there's a new update, you can get access to it right away. So that part is definitely nice. Now, once again, stay tuned for my other video that's actually going to walk you through the process of um, using armor paint and kind of a little bit more of a high level. This is what armory paint is or armor paint is all about and this is why you should love it this one more of a technical hands-on getting and building uh, a version of the executable so that you don't have to buy it but again if you do like it you don't want to go through this process or you just want to support the developer this is a great way of doing so all right that's it i hope you guys found that useful and i will talk to you all later goodbye